for you and for me to listen. And shall we turn to God's word? The prophet Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 28 through 31. The prophet Isaiah, 40, 28 through 31. And I gave the title to that scripture Rely on God's ability. Rely on God's ability. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Our loving Heavenly Father, we submit ourselves to this precious word that you have read. Quicken our hearts and our spirit. Minister to us in your own way and we shall give you the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God loves you and loves me. And he's concerned with every detail of our life. He's concerned, he's concerned with what burdens me, what burdens you. His concerns with your situation, Sharifa, of your education. And many times, when Allah, the Lord allows us to pass through <coughs> tough moments, challenges of life that come to hit you, that come to hit me, and it is all people, the children, the teens, young people, young adults, Husbands, wives, old people. When the, the challenges come to hit you and to hit me, sometimes we begin to question, where is God? Where are you? God allowed his people of Judah to pass through the challenge of being taken as captives in the land of Babylon. And it was not an easy experience for them. Being in that land of captivity, we know that they stayed there for seven good years. During those moments, they were in captivity. They seemed to be discouraged. They seemed to be losing the hope. And they, begin, they began to question God. And we see how they began to question God when we read verse 27 that we did not read. With the words, Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my just claim is passed over by my God. They thought that God had hidden his face from their situation. But praise God, God had not hidden his face from them as his people. God had eternal love for them. And in the midst of those moments of discouragement, in the midst of those moments of hopelessness, God sent his servant, the prophet Isaiah, with a message of encouragement to his people of Judah. And many times 
when you are cast down, when you are discouraged, when I'm cast down and discouraged, God by his mercy sends a message of encouragement to you. God by his mercy sends a message of encouragement to me. God sent a message to encourage them, to comfort them, to know despite what they were going through. The presence of the Lord was with them and will stand with them to strengthen them and to comfort them and to grant them the victory and finally to bring them to their land from where they were taken to captivity. And the message of encouragement the prophet brings to them comes from verse 28 that we read. The prophets, the prophet Isaiah is trying to remind them to remember who God is. Who God is. God is a supreme being. God is a supernatural being. God is a God of glory, of power. And no matter what the circumstances they were facing, God will be able to uplift them and give them the victory. So he tells them, have you not known? Have you not heard the everlasting God? He reminds them to know that God is the everlasting God. He has no beginning. He has no end. And someone who has no beginning, no end, is able to do anything. The eternal God is not limited by space and time. He reigns eternally forever and ever. In their situation to remember, the everlasting God is their God. Will be able to stand with them and give them the victory. They were to remember that God is the creator of the ends of the earth. He created the earth. He created the heavens. He created everything. And someone who has power to create, nothing can defeat him to fulfill. He wanted them to know that God has ability to raise them up and to grant them his presence and victory. He also reminds them to know who they were serving. A God who neither faints nor is weary. Many times I faint when I'm exhausted. Many times many of us faint when we are exhausted. But God, praise God, Amen. He never fails, neither is weary. He has that power, he has that authority, he has that glory around him all the time. And therefore, their faith were to be in this God, who is an everlasting God. Their faith was to be in this God, who is the creator of the ends of the earth, who neither fails nor is weary to uplift them and to give them the victory. Not only to remember who God is, but in verse 29, to remember what God does or what he's able to do. And Isaiah reminded them of what God is able to do. He gives power to the weak. And those who have no might increases strength. He was reminding them. As they faced they were weak, God was ready to give him them his power to strengthen them, to uplift them, so that they can rise up with confidence, with victory, because the presence of the Lord was with them. And as they felt weak, God was ready to strengthen them. 
Then in verse 30, he talks about the youths and the young men. He mentions about even the youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall utterly fall. We thank God for you, young people. You are strong, you are energetic, you have a great vision, and you are able to face every, every task with confidence. I can recall when I was a young man in the high school. I was strong and energetic. Yes. And I could be able to do exploits of running yes. one mile, three miles, yes. cross country, yes. and come out as a winner. Yes. Because I was young, a young person with energy, the with point. zeal, yes. to do that. In the case you tell me to run now, I cannot manage. <laughs> because I'm not a youth. Yes. But you youth, right. you are strong and energetic. You are able to do that. <laughs> After running one mile, three miles cross country, when I came to the end of the rope, victorious, I found myself exhausted. I found myself, though I was a young person, energetic, I'd run well, but I found myself exhausted. I had no strength. And that's what the prophet is reminding us. Even we young people, after we have done a tough exercise, sports running, we come to the point where we feel weary and exhausted. But he continues to say, those, verse 31, who wait on the Lord. Yes. Those who wait on the Lord. Those who rely on the Lord yes. shall renew their strength. Shall renew their strength. When you wait, rely on the Lord. The promise is that you and I, God shall renew your strength. God shall renew my strength. And he compares the strength of an eagle. The bird that can soar high in the air with great strength. So that's the strength God promises you. That's the strength God promises me when we rely on him. Many times we rely on our own knowledge. Many times we rely on our own understanding. But our own knowledge, our own strength, our own understanding is in the vein. Is in the vein. Don't trust your strength. Don't trust your widow. I don't trust my strength and wisdom. The need to rely on the Lord. Young people, the need to rely on the Lord. In 1 Samuel chapter 17, we read of a young man, a shepherd boy, in the field, watching over the sheep of his father, David the son of Jesse. God gave him the secret to know how it was important to lie on the Lord. He was a young person whom people could despise. He knows nothing and he can do nothing. Even his brothers despised him. But he learned to rely on the Lord. And because he, he learned to rely on the Lord, God gave him strength and power to do the exploits for God's glory. And we read in that chapter, first Samuel chapter 17, when he was taking care of the sheep of his father, how a lamb came and took one of the lambs that he was taking care. <clears throat> As a young man, who learned to rely on the Lord. God energized him, empowered him with anointing.
mandate from above to go against that land and take that land by the beers. He struck that land down and killed it and took the, the lamb from his mouth. Not only that, another time when the bear came, he did the same. He was not relying on his strength as a young boy, a shepherd boy. He was relying on the living God. When he went to see what was happening in the field, his brothers and others fighting against the Philistines, he found people fearful, running away from the giant Goliath. But because he learned to rely on the Lord, he was not afraid to go and face the giant. When the giant came, Goliath despising him, you come to me with a stick like a dog. What he spoke to Goliath, he spoke the words relying on the Lord. He told Goliath, you come to me with a sword, with a spear, with javelin. But I come to you in the name of God of the armies that you have defied. Yes. He was relying on that name, the God of Israel. And because he relied on the Lord, we read in that chapter, just with a slave and with a small stone, relying on the Lord. He struck the giant, and the giant fell. And he went, stood on him, and cut his head, and killed him. He relied on the Lord. What giants are you facing that are making you fearful? What situation that you have that looks like a giant where you think it's impossible for that situation to be solved? God is calling you and me to rely on the Lord. Every giant in your way, every giant in my way, will be defeated, not in your own power, not in my own power, but in the name of the living God upon whom you are relying and upon whom I am relying. Solomon, the son that began to rule after him, following the example of David, he relied on the Lord. He was chosen to be the king of Israel when he was still a young person without any experience. And like his father, God enabled him to rely on the Lord. When he had gone to sacrifice at Gideon, God appeared to him and asked him, give, ask whatever you want and I'll give to you. In the case I was, the one I would have asked, riches, glory, honor, but that's not what Solomon asked. He relied on the Lord. He knew that he was unexperienced. He knew that he had been chosen to lead a great people. And he knew the need to rely on the Lord. So he relied on the Lord when the Lord asked him, ask me what I shall give you. He told the Lord, I want you to give me a heart of understanding, a heart of wisdom, that I might know how to judge between the good and the evil. I want a heart of understanding that comes from you, a heart of wisdom that comes from you, so that whatever I do in leading your people will be done for your glory, for your praise, and for your honor. God was pleased with that request that Solomon made, relying upon God for the heavy responsibility of leading the people of God. To be given wisdom, to be given knowledge, to be given understanding. 
And the Bible tells us God granted Solomon that desire. He gave him wisdom, knowledge, understanding to lead God's people. Not only that, he gave him whatever he did not ask. Riches, glory, and honor. Because he learned to rely on the Lord. What a blessing, my brothers and my sisters. For you and for me to rely on the Lord. As Solomon did. And in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, he encourages you and me to rely on the Lord with the words, Trust in the Lord, not in yourself. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Put Him first. Submit yourself to Him. Let Him direct you. Let Him guide you. Let Him give you the wisdom from above. Let him give you the strength from above. And he shall direct your paths. Young people and all of us ghost people, it is very, very important to rely on the Lord. Rely on the Lord. <clears throat> Sharifa and the rest of the young people rely on the Lord. Amen. We know he has given you a vision or a dream to what you can become. And when you rely on the Lord, that dream, that vision will be realized. Amen. You thank God for that dream you have to become a doctor. And that dream will come true. Many of you have dreams. Some to become professors like Professor Mbova. That dream will come true. Some of you have a dream. One time, you will become a senator here in the United States. Yeah. That dream will come true. Yes, Lord. Whatever dream you have, when you rely on the Lord, you are relying on the King of Kings yes. and the Lord of Lords, yes. the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, yes. who never faints nor grows weary. Yes. He will let you fulfill that dream. Not in your own power, but you have learned to rely upon him. God calls you and me to rely on him in every aspect of our lives. We cannot live the Christian life in our own understanding, in our own strength or power. We need to rely on God to live the Christian life. Young people, we can live for God and become victoriously because we are not relying on ourselves, but we are relying on the blessed Lord and Savior. It's possible for you to live a pure life. And the psalmist reminds us in Psalms 119, verse 9, where shall a young man live a pure life? How can a young person live a clean, pure life? Yes. And the other is possible. Yes. It's possible. Amen. By taking heed according to the word of God. Yes. By taking heed according to the word of God. When you and I take the word of God and hide it in our hearts, that word will purify you and me. That word will keep you and me. That word will give you victory yes. so that you are able to overcome any temptation that comes your way. Leaning or relying upon the Lord. He calls us to rely on Him in everything that we do. <clears throat> to rely on Him in our marriages. To rely on him in our church businesses. To rely on him in everything that we do. 
that might have the direction of the living God. To rely on him in our jobs. To rely on him in our education. To rely on him for the battles you might be fighting. To let him stand with you and fight for you. To rely on, on him the situation you might be facing. You know that in yourself you have no might nor power, but you are relying on him for the Lord to stand with you, to uplift you, and to give you the victory. To, to rely on him for the protection. To rely on him for every provision of your need. Whatever need. To have that spirit of relying on him because you know that God has ability to give you the victory that you need. Shall we stand?